And also, as we talked about the importance of suffering, uh, I talk about in Live Not By Lies about this great movie by uh, Terrence Malick, the American film director Terrence Malick, called A Hidden Life. It's based on the true story of Franz Jägerstädter. Franz Jägerstädter was an Austrian Catholic farmer who was killed by the Nazis because he refused to swear allegiance to Hitler. Uh, in the movie, it starts out in their little village high up in the Alpine mountains of Austria, where you think they would have been safe from Nazism, but of course they weren't. When the Nazis came to town, most everybody in the village, and they were all Catholics, most of them became Nazis except Franz and his family. And uh, at one point, Franz walks to the village church and he sees an artist painting pictures on the wall of, from the Bible of the life of Jesus and so forth. And the artist tells him, he said, you know, people come into this church and they see these paintings and they admire Jesus. But Jesus didn't call admirers, he called disciples. How do you tell the difference between an admirer and a disciple? By the willingness to suffer. When persecution comes, that's how you determine who really believes this stuff. For whom it, that's how you figure out for whom it is life itself, not just an add-on to life, but life itself. You can look at this in a secular way too. You and I are sitting here talking in front of the founding fathers. You know, they, today in America, are we admirers of liberty and democracy? Or are we disciples of liberty and democracy? You'll be able to tell the difference when it comes to persecution. Those, whether they're religious or not, or whatever their religion, those who are willing to stand up for the truth and to stand up for liberty will prove themselves to be true disciples of liberty. And the rest who conform and keep their heads down, they never were. You know, and it just strikes me, there's sort of, I mean, this is almost bizarre to say, but it's actually, we're talking about a commitment to objective reality. That's a, com that's a commonality here, right? That's right. A, a, an objective truth, a shared, rea a shared reality. That would be the, at least, at least a piece of the pie. Right? That's true. And you know, when I was in Poland uh, interviewing uh, people for the book, this one Polish professor said he was so concerned about the young generation, the post-communist generation in his country. He said, we who grew up under communism came to understand how the state manipulated language to create a sense of unreality around us. And we, could fi we figured out how to see right through that. But these kids who've been raised uh, in freedom, for all the blessings of freedom, they don't have this uh, inoculation against lies. And so when you have this new language coming in talking about, uh, well, who knows what a woman is or a man is, we're gender fluid, we're this, we're that, all of these things, they are not vaccinated against ideolo this ideological virus. And so he said that we're seeing a lot of our young people who don't understand how this works, accepting this woke propaganda coming in from the West and assuming that this tells us what the world really is, when in fact it is a falsification of reality. On the one hand, there's this commitment to some sort of you know, objective reality, I think, that's shared. But there's also, there's something where there's a kind of a willingness, and I don't know where this comes from. I don't know if it's exactly courage. I've been thinking about this a lot. But uh, a willingness to not just go along with whatever sort of the tide of society is, which as you mentioned, many people are just, you know, naturally going to, I don't know if it's naturally, but are just going to do. Mm -hmm. So that it's a rare trait, and what is that? And I, I, do, I do think it's a commonality yeah. that we share. Yeah, it, it's a willingness to go against the flow. G.K. Chesterton said that uh, a dead thing can go along with the stream, but only a living thing can go against the stream. Yeah. And we're seeing this happen today, right now in Europe, for example. Some of the bravest people I know are vaccine resistors. Now, to be clear, I've been vaccinated myself. I'm, I'm not against vaccines at all, but I'm also against vaccine mandates because I think this is laying the groundwork for totalitarian rule. We're seeing this happen in Europe everywhere today. If you resist the mandatory vaccines in Austria and more and more countries, you pay a severe price. And there are people, not only Christians, but people willing to pay that price for this principle. I think these people are heroic, frankly. And uh, 
this is the sort of uh, thing I want to cultivate in my children, whatever the issue is. Mm -hmm. Do not go along with the crowd. You know, I, I'm from the deep south, uh, south Louisiana, a small town. And when I was born in 1967, so I have no memory of the segregation times, of the Jim Crow times. But when I moved back to my hometown 10 years ago, I discovered that in 1964 on the courthouse lawn, there was a white riot. A black man, uh, a pastor, uh, tried to register to vote and successfully did the first black man to register to vote in like 63 years there. And whites rioted against it. It was appalling to read this and also to know that probably in that crowd were some, some men that I grew up respecting, having no idea that they had done this. And I, for me, it was just so shocking to realize that in my beautiful little peaceful town that this violence, this racist violence had happened uh, just before I was born. But I also had to face the fact that what if I had been uh, a young man at this time? Chances are I would have been in that crowd rioting. I hate to think about it, but um, when I was thinking about what made people racist back then, if you were of my parents' generation, my dad was born in the 30s, my mom in the early 40s, you had no way of knowing uh, in any counter narrative to white supremacy. This was just in, this was life. Um, they had radio, but radio never talked about it. The newspapers never talked about it. Um, these people, not to excuse them at all, but these people, uh, my parents' generation, uh, really were ignorant of the evil that they did. I think at some level they had to have known it was evil, but certainly the churches didn't preach against it. I had to face this in myself though, where I, I like to think that I would have stood up there against the mob and defended these uh, black folks, but chances are I would have been just as cowardly as the rest of them. And I might not have joined the mob, but I would have kept my head down to avoid trouble. Uh, I think all of us have that within ourselves, that capacity to be cowardly, and it's important to realize it now. Uh, just last week as we're talking, I heard from an American missionary, I can't mention his name now, but uh, he had been put in prison in an Islamic country for his, his missionary work. And uh, he told me that he had always imagined that he would be very brave in prison. He said, in fact, I broke. But that taught me something about what, it, what we need, the sort of uh, skills we need and the virtues that we need to inculcate in ourselves in order to be strong. I'm going to be meeting with this man in a couple of weeks and uh, he wants to share this with me so I, I'm ho hopefully I can write about it. But it's important that we, we're humble about this sort of thing and recognize our own capacity for conformity. If you had been alive and a white person in my hometown in 1964, if you had stood up against that racist mob to defend these black citizens, you would have put your own life at risk. How many of us would have really done that? I can't say that I would have done that. I hope I would have, but I can't say for sure that I would have. I think right now is a time for all of us, everyone listening to this, this broadcast, to think hard about this. How much would you suffer for the sake of truth and justice and for your faith, if you're a person of faith? Uh, if you're not thinking through this right now and imagining these scenarios where you could lose your job, you could lose your liberty, and you might even have to lose your life for the sake of the truth. If you're not thinking about this now, then you're gonna be caught flat-footed and you may ultimately capitulate.